Well, so there are two techniques for separating solutions. Number one is evaporation. Okay, when you change something from liquid to vapor, right, it's going to leave behind whatever was dissolved into it. Okay, so if you have some salt water, right, and you evaporate all that water off, you boil it, then what you have left is the salt. This is a very good method for purifying water. It's a very good method for purifying water. So you can separate, if you have Kool-Aid, you can start boiling that Kool-Aid, and basically what you're going to have left after all that water boils off is that original powder of Kool-Aid. So this is a way of separating solutions. Once again, it's physical, physically separating, because a solution is a special kind of mixture. Also, you can distill it. It's called distillation, right? Um, you get vapor out of a liquid by heating it. Okay, this is good if you have two different liquids, two or more, right? There can be multiple liquids here that have different boiling points. Okay, so if you have different boiling points, suppose you have one that boils at 80, one that boils at 90, and one that boils at 100 degrees. You have these three liquids you can separate just by boiling. So if you raise the temperature up to 80, only one of those liquids is boiling. Even though they're in a mixture together, and it looks like it's all boiling, it's just that one liquid that's boiling. And uh, you can collect all of that liquid as the vapor comes off. You can collect all that liquid. And then when it's not boiling anymore, you can raise the temperature to 90, so you'll boil that other liquid, the one that um, boils at 90 degrees, and then you can use the same process, collect all that liquid, and then what you have left is only the liquid that boils at 100 degrees. So distillation can separate multiple liquids. Alright, so let's talk about states of matter. I've mentioned multiple states of matter as we've been talking, and you know probably just from living your life about the different states of matter. Once again, matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Can't forget that, right? The basics, we have to remember what we've already learned. All right, there's four physical states of matter. Physical states of matter. Solid, liquid, gas. You've probably heard of all three of these. And plasma, you may not have heard about. But we're going to go a little deeper. We're going to look at the particles in solids, liquids, and gases, and how they're moving around. OK, this is a solid. You can see that the solid, right, it has a specific shape. Because of the attraction of these particles, because they are not moving very fast, they are kind of tightly held together. They're tightly packed. They're moving a little bit, kind of vibrating back and forth in place. Um, you can't even feel it. You can't see it, but it's happening right it's happening just like those atoms are moving these particles are moving okay they cannot move about freely no so solids don't move about freely right you don't take a brick of wood and see that the wood is moving around it's not right it's it is what it is your desk is not moving around it stays in that one shape it is a solid okay it doesn't have a lot of energy it's got low low energy just a little bit of vibration low low energy so it cannot move freely because of that low energy level Okay, so, and because it's not moving freely, its particles are tightly packed, it has a definite shape and a definite volume, right? You wouldn't expect a brick of wood to suddenly change shape because it has that specific shape. And the volume's not going to change. It takes up the same amount of space no matter what. That is solid particles. So now you know more about that state of matter. Let's talk about liquids, right? We know that liquids don't have a specific shape, do they? No, they, they take the shape of their container, and that's because they have more energy than those solids. You can see them moving around, right? So to go from a solid to a liquid, we add energy. These particles move faster and faster until they're no longer really tightly packed. They're kind of sliding past each other. So they've got more energy than solids, right? More energy than solids, so they can move around, but they still stay close together. But because they're moving around, they're not tightly packed, we now have something that doesn't have a definite shape. Right? Liquids take the shape of the container. If you're drinking a can of Coke that's 12 ounces, right? that's the same amount, definite volume, same amount as a little bottle, 12-ounce bottle of Coke. Completely different shape, but the same liquid, the same volume. Right? Liquids don't change volume. They have a specific volume but they do not have a specific shape and it's because they're sliding past each other they're not tightly packed 
like solids, right? You give them more energy and the particles wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until they're like, oh, we can break loose now. Okay, we can move around that more energy. We've added energy and we've changed the way the particles are moving and now it is a liquid. So if a liquid is able to move around because we've added energy, whoa, look at the gas. We've added much more energy now and those particles are free to move around in all kinds of ways, right? They spread out widely. They move around freely. They've got lots of energy. They're bouncing around ev everywhere. Particles in a gas are bouncing around everywhere, right? Which means they have no definite shape, okay? That's, uh, that's, that's why air fresheners actually work. You plug in an air freshener or you put out an air freshener or anything that has a, a scent. We're going to go with pleasant scents like air fresheners. You put out that scent and the gases are moving around so fast and they're spreading out everywhere and that's why an air freshener in one corner of the room can be smelled everywhere because those gas particles are moving around. They're carrying that scent everywhere. Okay, So gases, they don't have a definite shape and they don't have a definite volume. They can fill up that whole room or it can be much smaller but since they're moving around freely, they will definitely take up the volume of whatever their container is. So you put them in a big container, those gas particles will spread out. You put them in a small container, and they'll be really, really close together. All that energy. Now let's talk about the plasma. Okay, you've noticed that we've added more and more energy as we've moved up. So you can imagine the plasma has lots of energy. Plasma's are moving around ultra ultra fast okay plasmas exist at extremely high temperatures extremely high temperatures right uh, and they're going so fast they got so much energy you see that those little white dots just appeared right those elect those are electrons okay the electrons have actually broken loose from the atoms and they're swarming around just like the atoms everything's moving so fast those electrons really can't hold on anymore and they break loose okay so like a gas plasmas have no definite shape and no definite volume there's so much more energy though that those electrons are broken loose okay essentially what you get is a glow like our fluorescent lights in the classroom are a kind of plasma you take the gas in those tubes and you run electricity through it and you heat it up you give it a lot of energy and it glows okay neon lights are the same way the neon lights that you may see advertising something okay that's a gas that is heated and becomes a plasma it glows lightning is another good example of a plasma when the electricity from a cloud flashes through the the air to the ground okay it superheats the gas particles in the air causing them to glow and the aurora borealis that is the northern lights that is caused by energy lots of energy it's heating up those particles causing them to be ultra excited making them glow all right so we've talked about energy energy is what causes those particles to move faster a lack of energy may cause them to move more slowly, right? So physical states of matter are based on the total amount of energy that the particles of a substance have, okay? More energy, more movement, less energy, less movement. That's how we transition from state of matter to another state of matter, right? You're either gaining or you're losing energy. So let's look at some changes in the states of matter okay here's a hierarchy more or less energy all changes in state of matter require a change in energy some energy is either put in or taken out so let's add some heat to our solid you add some heat those particles get more energy they move around faster right and they melt okay from solid to liquid we call that melting the particles are moving faster okay they're able to break loose from that solid state and they're then moving around let's add some more heat to a liquid and it changes to a gas we call this vaporization also called evaporation or boiling okay the liquid is changing to a gas when your water is boiling those bubbles that are coming up are actually the gases that were trapped in the liquid that were converted 
and they boil to the top and then they are released into the air. So the liquid that has already turned into a gas that's at the bottom of a pot has to force its way to the top so it can be released into the air. Add even more energy to any gas and you get a plasma. Moving so fast the electrons break loose. Okay, so no more heat. We're already at plasma. Now let's start taking away energy. Taking away energy, right? Take away energy from a plasma, changes back to a gas. You take away energy from a gas, it turns into a liquid. What is this called? Condensation. Absolutely. Okay. Slowing down even more. The particles are slowing down. Not, not a lot of energy from liquid to solid. We take away more of that energy and we freeze that liquid. Okay, those particles are moving so slow that they are not able to break loose from each other anymore and they form that solid. Special situation. Solid from gas, directly from a solid to a gas, skipping the liquid phase. This is called sublimation. You may have seen this in what we call dry ice. Dry ice. It's sitting there on the table. It goes directly from a solid to a liquid. It, excuse me, not a solid to a liquid, a solid to a gas. And it skips that liquid phase is what it does. It skips that liquid phase directly from a solid to a gas, skipping the liquid phase. There's no liquid there. You'll see it go straight into a gas. And the opposite of sublimation is called disposition. So if we want to turn that CO2 gas into a solid, it's the process called disposition, which often involves high amounts of pressure. High amounts of pressure. We squeeze that gas into a solid and skip that liquid phase. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning about the states of matter, the properties of matter, and how all the things that we've already learned are starting to fit together even better. I can't wait to work with you in class.